What's up everybody, this is Ryan here, and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about dealing with mistakes and emotional problems and roadblocks when it comes to uh, programming in particular, but the stuff I'm going to talk about here, you can actually extrapolate it to pretty much life in general, but since I'm a programmer, the person who asked this question is a programmer, we're going to kind of keep it confined to that uh, domain for the most part. So what I would like to do first is I'm going to kind of paraphrase the question that was asked to me and that'll kind of introduce the topic. So the question was, uh, and I'm paraphrasing this a little bit, is it just me or is it common to have problems dealing with mistakes? So for example, when I have some trouble with some code I'm writing, I'll research it for like an hour and then if I don't find a solution, I'll surrender and uh, I, don't, I won't really try to solve it until I get another wave of motivation. Uh, maybe it's just a problem with motivation or something to do with motivation, but I don't know how to feel, with, how to feel in moments like that and what I should do. Uh, so this was the uh, basically paraphrasing the question, and thank you very much for the question to our friend who asked it. So the first theme that I wanted to talk about on the subject is uh, this general problem with mistakes and roadblocks and things like that. So the first thing I uh, want to mention to all the beginners watching this, uh, I'm not sure what the skill level of the individual ask, asking this question is, but I'm assuming junior to intermediate level. So um, I've been coding uh, like regularly for about five years and one thing I want to tell the beginners right away is that um, I remember thinking, especially like in the first year when coding was really frustrating for me and roadblocks were like endless, um, I remember thinking, will I eventually get to the point where I don't have to deal with this feeling anymore? Like I don't know how to solve the problem in front of me and it's frustrating me and demoralizing me and stuff like that. So uh, I have good news and bad news on that front. So the good news is that um, you can basically get to the point where dealing with the roadblocks and these sorts of things doesn't upset you. And I'll talk about how to do that. The problem is that literally every developer that still regularly writes code probably, I'm not going to say at least once a day, I'm not going to give it a number, but every programmer, and we're talking like from junior level to like Robert Martin or Martin Fowler, or my friend Darrell Bitsy, who's a senior developer in a company, or my friend Devor Meric, who's a, a senior developer in another company. We all deal with roadblocks all of the time. So the first thing I want to mention here is, like I said before, I recall being a junior and kind of thinking, I really hated getting stuck. And I, I kept thinking, will I ever be like good enough that I don't have to deal with it? Uh, the truth is, most of what we do as programmers, to be honest, the reason why we get paid the big bucks, so to speak, is because we have to solve complicated problems pretty much every day. So the first thing I, I would like to emphasize for especially beginners listening to this, the first thing you need to do is you need to kind of just mentally reframe these roadblocks that you deal with and understand that this is something you're going to be dealing with for your entire career. Now, I'm not saying the frequency of roadblocks that you run into will be the same. Over time, as you learn your framework a lot better, as you understand lower level computing better, um, as you just get better at looking up answers really quickly or finding good code source, uh, open source code bases and things like that to compare your code to, you will learn how to solve problems way faster. Uh, another important thing is just understanding that we all need help at some point and we it's a good idea to actually ask questions on Stack Overflow or we have our Slack channel for WiseAss. One thing that really uh, blew me away when it comes to the programmer community is that my impression of a lot of programmers is that they're pretty critical, negative, uh, judgmental people and to be honest that is kind of true of a, a certain number of them. But in reality, the community, if you're willing to just show like a little bit of respect and just politely ask a question, 
there are so many people out there willing to help you. So that's another thing is just kind of getting over the stigma of asking questions. So anyways, what I'll get to next is some practical tips to actually deal, so motivation-wise and with a couple other things like that. How do, I, how do we actually deal with situations where, let's say, for example, well, actually, let me tell a quick story. and This is a true story from, I believe it was last Saturday. So uh, as some of you may know, I'm currently working on a very long and quite detailed uh, series on writing Android applications in Kotlin in model view, view and model architecture, blah, blah, blah. Last Saturday, uh, I had a to-do list item of about, I think it was about four or five items. So it was like, uh, write a video plan, um, record the video, and then uh, edit the video and publish, and there, there was uh, some other thing going on there as well. So on that particular day, I got busy and I wrote out my daily schedule, which looked something like this. And so I got started working. And the first thing I was going to do is I was going to work on the video plan. And I started working on that. And after a half hour, I realized that I needed to actually really break down this topic a lot deeper than I previously had. And what that basically meant is I ended up writing an article on the subject, which became my article on model view view model and also refactoring some of the code that I was going to be teaching. When all of that was said and done, it was time for me to stop working for the day. So it's not even that I didn't get the, the first list item on my to-do list uh, totally complete. I wasn't able to even start on it. So normally how I used to deal with this is I probably would get pretty upset because I would be looking at my to-do list and thinking, oh crap, I didn't get anything done that I wanted to get done today. That's where the lie is. That's where the daily schedule comes in. So a big thing I would like to emphasize to people, uh, especially again, junior developers, is I used to basically judge my success, w whether a given workday was successful or not, based on how many items I knocked off on my to-do list. What I do now, and I really emphasize, or I really encourage this for people, is I measure my success on a given day based on how much effort I put in, not how many to-do list items I completed. Now, I do track to-do list items, but what I do now, essentially, is I basically, oops, um, every day I'll pretty much write two lists. I've actually written them up on the whiteboard today, and sometimes I'll do that. So I'll just talk about these this very briefly. So as I said before, what I'm basically doing here, and I notice it's 8.56, so let me just cross one of these off. Um, but yeah, did I actually, when... During the time scheduled, did I sit down and put effort? Did I try to solve the problem? Even if I didn't actually solve the problem, did I try? So what I do is in these work blocks, I do try to go through my to-do list, but if I have a situation like last Saturday, and this is exactly what happened last Saturday, is that I didn't get a single item checked off of my to-do list, but I ended that I ended that work day feeling really good because I knew I put in about seven solid hours of effort trying to solve the problem. And those that was a necessary thing to do in order to write the video plan. I needed to figure this st stuff out first. So the reframe we're taking here, and I'm not sure if this is a particular issue for the person asking this question, but one of the things we deal with is we, we get told all the time, work by a to-do list, set deadlines for yourself, and all these sorts of things. And on a certain level, that's true. The problem with that approach, basically judging your progress and success based on to-do items, is that as pretty much every developer who has any experience has figured out over time, we actually can't accurately judge how long it's going to take to do a particular to-do list item. 
So I'm not saying don't set deadlines or follow something like an agile scrum process if you're working in a team or something like that, but what I am saying here is that there is a disconnect, be generally speaking, between how long we think something is going to take and how long something actually takes. And I'm sure any programmer listening to this has had the experience of saying, oh yeah, I've got five items and they're all going to be easy, so I'll breeze through this particular to-do list. And then you get stuck on like number one or two, and it's something that should be painfully simple to fix, and you can't actually fix it. So maybe the problem is that your IDE is having problems. Maybe you're using a tool that was written by somebody else and it isn't behaving the way it's expected. Uh, there's all these different things which can basically cause these roadblocks that we run into. So before I jump to the next theme, I just really want to reemphasize this. What we're doing here is we're, we're saying, I'm not going to judge my success or my self-esteem or how I feel, my emotional state, based on how many to-do list items I do or don't do on a given day, or at least we're not going to make that the most important thing ever. Instead, we're kind of mentally reframing this to say, okay, all I can really do on a given day is put forth a couple hours of good effort, and that has to be good enough. If I'm sitting down to get my work done, and it turns out that the first item on, on my to-do list I thought it was going to take uh, maybe 30 minutes, and it ended up taking like three days. The problem with that is we're, we're actually creating the problem by assuming beforehand that the to-do list item was going to take only an hour. And then when it doesn't, we're like, wow, I, you know, I must suck or something like that. I must be bad at programming because this is a simple program, and I've been working on this problem for days, and I can't seem to get it to work. So again, like uh, the person who asked this question asked at the start, is it common to have problems dealing with mistakes? Yeah, it's very, very common. It's something I used to deal with all of the time. It's something which a lot of programmers deal with. And the thing I really want to emphasize here is that a lot of the, the problems that come when we hit a roadblock are really just the way we're mentally framing the situation. So I talked a little bit about mentally reframing the fact that we will always run into roadblocks and mistakes as developers, and that's something that we just kind of need to get used to. What we want to do is we want to decouple our emotional response to the roadblock from the fact that we're in a roadblock. So how and why should we do that? Well, let me start with the why. Why should you practice not getting upset when you get stuck. Getting upset actually will make you less capable of solving the problem. Now, I am not a neuroscientist, but insofar as I understand the science behind this particular topic, when you're angry or uh, fearful or, or whatever, your brain is basically engaging what's called the limbic system, and the limbic system basically tends to reduce communication when it's active with your prefrontal cortex, your, the smart part of your brain. So the problem with this approach is that when we get emotionally upset, even if sometimes we feel like anger can focus our mind, um, what tends to happen is it actually reduces our ability to solve the problem. So let's look at this in very, very clear and unambiguous terms here. Well, let's say I sit down to work and in the first 30 minutes, I get totally stuck with the problem I can't seem to solve. So normally my reaction to that, if uh, so this would be the case several years ago, would be to get upset. And then probably I would spend about an hour working on it and then after an hour, I would get quite upset. Now, my sort of natural tendency is to basically look at this problem that I have to solve like an adversary. And then oftentimes, I would then spend another couple hours working on the problem, just trying, I got to solve this. I must solve this kind of attitude. So over the span of like four hours, I'm basically getting more and more frustrated and worked up and angry and self-defeating about the whole situation. So the actual practice that we need to take here 
is so using the leverage of so a basically teaching yourself if I do sit down and work at, at the time scheduled I'm not gonna have any self-critical thoughts in fact I'm gonna give myself a pat on the back of the head and say good job Ryan uh, it doesn't actually matter that you didn't get through your to-do list you sat down and you worked hard at the time specified and that's all you need to do that's really all you need to do to be in a good mood and to feel like you got something done putting forth effort so in very generalized terms here what I'm pointing to is that we need to treat our emotional habitual tendencies in this particular case as just what they are just a habitual tendency which we might have picked up from our parents or our friends or something like that and then we need to use kind of our our wisdom faculty for lack of a better word our uh, sort of smart part of our brain to look at those emotions and kind of say hold on a minute here getting angry isn't actually going to help me solve this problem any faster in fact all it's really going to do is it's going to make me angry and let me tell you when you hold on to those angry emotions over a long period of time then it will start to have negative effects on your brain and your physical health this is something I know about very very well from personal experience so what we need to practice doing here is on a day-to-day -day basis judge your progress basically by how much effort you put in on a given day and decide what a decent fair amount of effort uh, per day will work for you so for me for like the first two years of programming I had a lot of trouble focusing and so I think probably a good bar to set myself at would be like two hours of programming a day now back then I was working full-time in a job that wasn't programming so two hours was appropriate at this point I have a decent amount of spare time so I can pretty much carve out six hours a day so don't necessarily judge yourself by other people's standards in this regard but ahead of time say to yourself if look if I can just be fairly consistent and put in two hours a day then that's better than trying to do like eight hours a day and then failing that and then the next day I get nothing done because I have this negative self-defeating attitude so anyways hopefully some of that rambling was useful to someone watching this but uh, these are basically the different steps that I take or the mental reframes that I apply to basically not just progress quickly and have like a good measure of what I expect out of myself on a, a daily basis that's not like way out of my reach uh, but when I actually follow this process properly and I'm getting really good at doing that I pretty much end every day on a good note no matter whether I ran into a roadblock which prevented me from getting anything else done or whether I absolutely ran through my to-do list way too quickly and then I ended up doing some extra stuff because I had an extra work block and some spare time so yeah that's basically it thank you so much for watching and peace out